Hello, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I will be showing you how to do a mesh livery on a Roblox plane with UV maps. Before we begin, I would like to list a few things that you will need for this. One, you'll need a mesh plane. This method does not work on CSG aircraft. If you want to learn how to do, how to do CSG liveries, I'll leave a link to the video I made on it. You can do mesh liveries on CSG aircraft, but it involves some bl complicated blender thing that I don't know how to do. So you'll need a mesh aircraft. Next thing you'll need is UV maps. Likely the tech group owner where you got your aircraft will have these provided for you, but if you made the aircraft, you're gonna have to make the UV maps too. Finally, you'll need a photo editing software, or a photo software of some sort. This is this one is paint.net, that's the one I'll be using, but things like Photoshop could be used too. Once you have everything, you can open your UV maps in your editing software, and I'm going to demonstrate using a Brussels Airlines A330. This, by the way, is Vuela's new Airbus A330-300 that just came out. To start off, this is optional, but if you want your livery to be the best quality possible, you can resize your UV maps to be bigger. So you'll go to resize, I'm gonna do 8000, and so you can do any size, just keep the aspect ratio the same. The bigger the better quality, I believe. Next, you're gonna start drawing your livery, and you're going to have to be doing the livery on a different layer than the UV map. This is because you're gonna have to remove the UV map once you're done, but have everything else stay. So, go down to layers and add a layer. I'm gonna put it right under so you can still see the UV maps while you draw. This is really important. Do not draw the livery on the same layer as the UV map. So I got a picture of my livery, I also got the logo and text. And I'm going to start with this light blue stripe right down there. And I'm going to use a color picker to get it. Yeah, I know it's shaded differently, but it doesn't really matter. It, there won't really be a problem. And to make a straight line, there are multiple ways you can do it, but I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to make a rectangle like that. Carefully decide where you want it to go, where you want it to start, and I'm going to draw it like that, right on that line. And, as you can see, we have drawn that rectangle. Now I will be doing this part of the tail, this blue part of the tail, and I'm actually going to go to the logo, because I'm 90% sure the text is the same color as the tail on Brussels Airlines, so I'm going to pick that color. Go to the UV maps, and I'm going to use the line curve tool. I'll be drawing a simple line. I'm going to make it a little bigger, but there. I'm going to draw a simple line right down there. And I'm going to curve it so it looks like that. That's good enough. Then I'm gonna draw this there, and continue it up there. Doesn't matter how you do that, as long as it fills the tail in. Like that. And I believe that I am done with the drawing part of the livery. So now I'm going to clone this layer, and then flip it horizontal, flip the clone horizontal, and move it directly up there, and this part can be tricky. It depends what UV maps you're us using usually, but you you have to line it up the same way as it is on the other side, and that that just that causes problems sometimes. But you can use these lines as reference points. Like I'm looking at the windows, and one, two, three, exactly three lines below the windows is where the blue part is. So I'm gonna put it there. Then I have to move the tail so that it works properly, which is harder in this case. Harder to see. Also, I'm gonna have to fill that part out with more blue later. That should be good enough. I know it isn't perfect, but it could be worse. And now I'm going to erase this part below. I'm gonna go to the erase tool to make it a lot bigger. 
going to remove all this so that it doesn't obstruct the tail on the other side. Now we got the basic painting of the livery. Now we'll add in logos and stuff. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to crop this. And I got another one open too, I'm going to crop the text. I'm going to be adding the logo to the tail, I'm going to copy, control C. Then I'm going to paste it into a new layer preferably because if it's on the same layer, if you paste it on the same layer it could cause some problems. Yep. I'm going to resize it to fit on the tail, make it as accurate as possible. Now I'm going to clone the layer, move it up to there. Rotate it, and looky here, here's a problem I've noticed with the logo suddenly. The logo is designed a bit differently. The layout is designed a bit differently than on here than it is on the actual tail. So if you look at this picture on the A330 on this side of it, the dots all have a different alignment with each other or a different arrangement, and that causes a problem here, so I'm just going to do my best. Okay, that'll be good enough for this logo. Now I'll be adding the text onto there. I'm gonna copy and paste into a new layer. I'm gonna paste the logo into the same layer. Oh no, not new image. Um, into the same layer. Going to take all of this, clone it, move it over to this side of the aircraft. The last thing I'm going to add to the livery is the registration number or letters. This is OOSFO. I'm gonna do it on here because why not. I'm gonna use the text and I don't even know what the font is so I'm just going to do my best with deciding what the font will be. Move it down over there. There we go. So I have completed my livery on this A330. Oh wait, one thing, one issue I have found, it's around here. Mm. You'll have to look out for this just in case. I'm going to get this color again and as you can see over there, right at the tail, there's some missing. So let's fix that. I can just draw, I can just draw some blue onto there. Yep. Now we're finished. Like I said, it does not matter what is outside. All that matters is, is what is on the shapes of the aircraft on the UV maps. Once you are done, go to the UV map layer, which it's named the background here for some reason, and then delete it. So you just have this, make a new layer and put it on the bottom of all the others, and fill it up with white or whatever background color your aircraft is. And this is also important, you're going to have to flatten them so that Roblox will accept it as a decal. And then you're going to have to save it as a PNG or something. Once you have saved it as a PNG, upload it to Roblox. And now I'm going to go over to Roblox Studio so we can put it on the plane. Now we will be putting the livery onto the aircraft, and don't mind the Jet Airways livery on it. Also don't mind the Swiss and Lufthansa planes. The first thing you need to do is select all the fuselage parts of the, of the plane or everything on the plane that the livery will, would appear on. In this case, all the parts already have a name to it. It's They're named livery on this aircraft, so I'm just going to select all of them. And they don't have to go at the same time. And I believe I got all of them selected. Now I'm going to go to my images. 
here it is. Here is my Brussels Airlines UV. I'm gonna copy the assessed ID or URI, any of them are, is fine, and then paste it into the texture ID, Control C, Control V, and there you have it. Here's why you need to be careful when you are aligning one side with the other because this could happen. There's a slight distortion, maybe between the two, if you see that. Maybe it's more not noticeable down there though. But that can happen a lot, especially if you're new to livery designing. And if you want to do the engines or winglets, you can do them if you have the UV maps for them. Just do the same steps I showed you, but on the engine or winglet UVs. Also, it didn't appear on the cargo door for some reason. That's because it's not named. And we're just gonna have to... We're going to have to paste the texture ID into the cargo door. Yep. Same with these gear doors. Oh, whoops. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it helped out. If it didn't help, let me know, and you can always ask any questions in the comments. I'll try to respond to them. But I likely won't if it was something that I had already covered in the video. So make sure you pay very close attention. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.